give a picture away of Jordan and Peter. Peter and Katie had nowhere to turn. There was a photographer lurking in the shadows wherever they stepped, both at land and sea. They spent four days holed up in their cabin. The holiday was a disaster. But I'm talking about when you look to the side and you see a camera and you automatically think they've been taking pictures of you. It's not always true. But I understand what you're feeling because six or seven years ago I did feel like that, so I understand that. It's only when I stepped away and then came back that I realised that I can't let that bother me because because you spend your time being stressed. And the press here have been absolute scum, if you ask me. We're with our family. We've travelled all these hours to get away from the press. You know, because we don't want to get our families in. We've got old people here with us. We don't want to stress them out, and they have stressed us all out. The only times oh, I was really happy is when I was in bed here with Pete on my own in this room. That is sweet, isn't it? Coming up, the lucrative world of kiss and tell. In his dreams, he reckons I've slept with him and he sold the story and it's front page of Sun today. The one thing all women share is they can't spot a bastard. And who could Katie possibly be talking about? Her lip liner she wears up here. She looks like a dress queen, she really does. Chickens, just uh, very easy. If I can do it, anyone can do it. Just read the back, tells you what's good, but I add a few extra bits. Two months on from the horrors of the cruise, Peter and Casey have settled back down to domestic bliss. Casey's clubbing trips are now ancient history, and our couple seems happy to spend a quiet night at home with a family. But outside this cosy world, there are many people desperate to break up Katie and Peter's harmony. Celebrity sex does great business for the newspapers and for the individuals eager to kiss and tell. Katie and Peter's jungle romance surprised everyone, but she already had a boyfriend, Scott Sullivan, who was watching at home. The chemistry wasn't there sexually, and I would put on the headache excuse feel sick, and I would go out late, and I'd come home. You know, I was drunk. And I just, if I did have sex, I was probably drunk with him because I just couldn't bear him touching me. You know, at night time when we'd watch telly, I'd get the duvet cover and go like that, you know, cut it off him so I wouldn't feel his dick in my back. You, you know what it's like, you're woman. <laughs> Scott's year-long relationship with Katie was cut short in full view of millions of TV viewers, and he wanted revenge. First he shared his heartache with the nation in print. Scott Sullivan, who was her boyfriend who she dumped when for Peter, um, he sold his story to us, actually, to Closer magazine, and he was very, very vocal about how, you know, bitter he was about the way she'd been treated. And I think um, he felt he had to do that because he'd been humiliated on TV. Not satisfied with his kiss-and-tell story, Scott did the unimaginable when he started dating Katie's worst nightmare, Jodie Marsh. And she's going out with She's your got ex. my sloppy seconds. She's got your ex, got Sullivan. <laughs> how do you feel about that? Well, for a start, he's not that good in bed, so apparently she's into her sex, so good luck there. And, Scott, if you are listening, I wish you'd stop wearing the clothes I bought you. Get yourself a job and uh, stop relying on your dad and getting money off him. The final insult came when the rather ungallant Scott went on to sell another story, comparing and contrasting the sexual prowess of both girls. This was a dream of a story for Fleet Street. Daddy Marsh, right? Jody's... Yes, the slap is probably better in bed. No, 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 no wait, a second, wait a second, wait a second. You know, I'm like shit in bed, but if a man says what? I'm good, then that's what matters. Can I tell you something? Can you just wait? Yeah. This donkey here says that that um, she's better in bed than you because why? Because Scott, what's his name? Sullivan. But he was shit in bed. Yeah, and yeah I well, said this is the point. Because he said it, that makes it a fact, does it? Not an attractive girl at all. She's the state of her nose. Her lip liner she wears up here, she looks like a drag queen, she really does. Yeah, she is absolutely rank. Yeah, but I can tell that she really was happy with Scott, because she's got a purple thing instead. Yeah. Exactly. You've got what you want, Jane. You've got on the covers of magazines, well done. Let's see if you can stick around for ten years. With the claws firmly out, the tabloid hacks took their seat at ringside for the ultimate catfight. She says we've been friends. I don't even know the girl. She said I threw a glass at her. I've never even been in a club to throw a glass Look, at her I think it's with safe her to in say the club. 
the only reason that Jody Marsh has made any sort of publicity is when you talk about her. Press hunger for stories about Katie is such that anyone, it seems, can sell a story about her, even if it isn't true. Early in Katie's relationship with Peter, a jockey by the name of Oliver Skeet alleged an affair. Katie toyed with the idea of suing, but let it go. Stupid, ugly, fraggle rock, ugly Oliver Skeet, in his dreams, he reckons I've slept with him and he sold a story on its front page of the Sun today, describing all how apparently we shagged him his escort. Um, nine years ago or whenever it was. It's an absolute load of shit. And I'm going to take him to court now. Is I'm, I'm getting my solicitor today to write a letter to him so he better start saving up his painting and decorating money because uh, he's got a nice little price he'll have to pay in court. So, yeah. I know, I'm not putting up with it. I think it's out of order when people think they have the right to go to a paper and make up a story about me sexually I'm on about, making that they've had sex with me when that is so untrue, I think it doesn't upset me, it just annoys me how people get away and do things like that. There's a whole industry of ex-Jordan uh, boyfriends. I think there's a special agent that you go to. Hi, yeah, I was with Jordan. Okay, fine, there's a form you fill in and that's it, you get a book deal automatically, you get on in the newspapers. So why do so many of Jordan's exes kiss and tell? Revenge or just the desire to make a quick buck? I think people sell their stories because, number one, she's a very sexy woman and they've had her so they want everybody to know. Number two, we want to know. Number three, we want to see a picture of her. And number four, um, that's the way the tabloids run. They just obviously want to make a quick buck and obviously it's funny because when I was with Scott, I'm not bringing up Nate, well, I'm not hurting you, but I'm telling the truth. He said his mum always wanted to get him to modelling and he thought he was good looking and wanted to be a model. So maybe that was his way of getting noticed. Same with Matt Peacock. He is a cock. He wanted to say him. He really thought he could be a model and said that he was a model and he bloody was not. A model for what? A pair of butt teeth. Kiss and tell stories haven't been damaging in, in the fact that Katie doesn't pay much attention to them. People are going to write stories to make money. Their exes do it because maybe, as you said, they need the money. It's a revenge thing. You know, it's, it's like people read the story, the paper woman, they throw it out in the bin the next. It's always going to be a story about Jordan or Casey Price. It's what makes money, you know, and if you can, if people can sell stories better to make money, they're going to do it anyway. But it doesn't affect her. I mean, people have been writing stories about her for years. You know, it's just another another thing that comes with the business. Most of Jordan's exes have, have kind of kissed and told, as they say, and that's because you know, people are people aren't nice. You know, people aren't nice, and there are very few people who will. Most people will say, "No, nah, if I have a relationship, that's it. That's private. I'm not going to air it in the, in the in the press. Why would I?" Well, two hundred thousand pounds. All right. Well, I'll tell you what happened, and. It's a horrible world we live in, but it is, it is the way of it. I think Jordan's exes all tell their stories because they know that we love to hear about um, having sex with Jordan and what it's like to have sex with Jordan. And most of us will go through life without having sex with Jordan. And anyone who has, we're more than willing to listen to what they've got to say about it, if they can still speak. Indeed, a night with Jordan can be worth anything from ten grand upwards. Katie's exes sell their stories because most of them haven't got any other way of making a living, which is a proof that she doesn't just choose rich, powerful, influential men in order to further her own career. She certainly doesn't. She just chooses creepy guys. They just want quick money. It's just, you know, which really, when you think about it, is not really a lot of money. Well, it might be to them, but it's not in the long run of, of things. So, it's, you know, I just don't understand why someone would do it. But they do, unfortunately, and they will always do it. So mm. it's just one of those things. I wouldn't say they've all treated her badly, but I think they've all used her in one way or another. And they were all pure ponces, they never had jobs. Um, they just, I don't know, they were just like my little puppy dog, you know, if I said jump, they'd jump and say, oh, how high. One thing all women share is they can't spot a bastard. The look of Peter is typical of the boys, because she likes boys that may be men that look sort of like pretty boys. <laughs> What makes 
peak's different. The peak's different because you start, once you've had Greek, you've hit your peak. And, uh... So, it's just doing the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> no, and he is, he, although he's 31, he doesn't look it, he's still young at heart. <laughs> I love it that he's got a talent, he's got an ambition, um, he makes me laugh, he, I know I can't get him around my finger, he's family orientated, and I feel that he generally does worship the ground I walk on. Katie's memoirs were published last May, the intimate stories of all her past sexual encounters. Oh, have you, uh, remember there's one guy has got a wart on his bonnet? Oh, yeah. As she set about a whirlwind of promotional press and radio interviews, her critics were quick to accuse her of double standards. You know, it's one thing, he's a lovely guy and everything, yep. but I knew it wouldn't work, because sexually, he wasn't doing it from, for a very long time. Yeah. Oh, he's going to be chuffed to bits no, to hear that. Knows, <laughs> oh, yeah. But he knows it, and I did tell my friends, yeah. and it's in my book. What about our oh, poor old Gareth Gates? Is this true about you and Gareth Gates? <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> No, no well, his mom's about, have, have you had, read that chapter? No. Uh, when, he, when he split his penis. <laughs> <laughs> he lied that he was with me. He put me, you know, through how in the way that everyone said I'm making it up, I'm dreaming, and people was like, oh, Gareth would never go for a girl like you. You know, he put me through the humiliation, so I thought I'll get you back and do the same to you. I always said I was never going to say anything, but why not? It's the truth. Jordan doesn't see it's revenge, but say with the likes of Gareth Gates, he didn't completely denied having any relationship with her. Um, and as it turned out, he lost his virginity to her. He denied it to such a point where he was digging himself and digging himself in the hole, and when it came out, you know, it, it, it reflected badly on him. I was always honest and stuck to my word, and uh, he was still denying it, and then it came out that he was lying, but people still slate me for it. When I'm not the one lying, I was still in the truth. Do you think you have been slated for it? Yeah, of course I have, yeah, and then even now people are saying I'm a right snapper for going out with him, but then, what about him? And he still went and slept with a pregnant woman, so why doesn't he look bad for it? As a fact, I know Kate has never sold a kiss and tell on anyone. The only time that she does interviews or stories is in reply to accusations, or if, um, it's a revenge thing, you know, it's, there will be a time when that person sold a story three years ago, but she would still have a mental thing in her mind saying, well, when the time's right, this will come out and what have you. If you go out with somebody like Jordan, if you honestly think there isn't a danger that she's going to tell all to either the news of the world, a television program, or perhaps do a book, then you need your head checked. That is the world in which the girl lives, operates and knows, and she's not going to just settle down at night and start to do some crochet. Even Katie's nan Esther was desperate to read the chapter on Gareth Gates, but not before she received her signed copy. What's you? Yes. Oh, come on, nan. Yeah. Come on, then. <laughs> He's patiently waiting. Oh, I to my special nan. Yes, man. Oh, they think they're I'm going to squeeze round the back. Katie Price, the tough-talking man-eater, is usually thick-skinned enough to see off all criticism. But some stories have hurt, and they all centre on her son, Harvey. It hurts me when they say, like, I'm a bad mum, and, and they bring Harvey into it. There was a programme I got told about, um, I can't remember the comedian's name, but it was actually taking the mickey out of Harvey. They had him in, like, a big Zumo outfit and stuff. When, in fact, if he knew that Harvey's big, not because I feed him a lot, because he doesn't eat a lot, it's because he's got a thyroid problem. <laughs> Because Harvey's young, <laughs> he can't talk, and then it's just, he's a minor, it's not fair on him. You know, they could take pictures of me, but I don't like it when they involve Harvey. When are you able to say to the press, well, work's work's work, but now it's, it's my time and I need my privacy. And where she is, where she has been forthcoming and willing to, you know, you know even to the, the OK thing with wedding dresses or, or whatever, it's like you're selling your soul, and is, is there anything that people don't know about you? Because everything you hear or read or see, your, your life is lived in the, in the papers. Um, so I think, hand in hand, you've got to expect that the press will be outside when you don't want them to be. The only point that I think it is wrong is when they're taking pictures of Harvey. I mean, a lot of people will probably say, yeah, well, you've posed in OK with him. So what, you know, that's, I'm controlling that. And, you know, 
It's different. Have you seen that under the bed? I just thought I'd show you that. Because you never know, you're in the country, who's going to turn up in your bedroom? What's that? I bet he had butts himself with it. Coming up, Peter's tackle comes into question. And she thinks he's got a chip of lard When he's got a lot of oil. And the knives are out for one of Pete's exes. And even Pete says that he was that desperate, he just thought, oh, you'll do. Katie Price has had a highly colourful sex life and is rarely out of the press, but what do we know about Pete's former lovers? There was, of course, that much publicised affair with a former Spice Girl, and when Pete winds up Katie about her exes, she makes a joke about his. How much more can she elaborate? Gareth Gates, Dwight York, what more in her book? Haha, <laughs> 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 what about you, Melby? All right. Uh, chocolate. Right, <laughs> 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 about time you went out with an albino, thank you. We know that Katie Price has been the victim of many salacious kiss-and-tell stories. But how many of Peter Andre's exes have kissed and told? The answer is very small, as one girl would have it. Who, that stupid slipper? Is she trying to be a model? I don't know. She needs to lose a bit of weight first. <laughs> Here you go. I bet her mum and dad are really proud of her. She said he, I can't understand, she said he's got a chipolata. <laughs> when he's got a lump of a boil. <laughs> she obviously didn't turn you on because he hasn't got a, a chip on her. Years away from the limelight in Cyprus meant that Pete was not considered lucrative enough for his exes to make any money from him. By the time he had left the jungle and moved in with Katie, it was a different story. Then, according to a marketing analyst called Anastasia, Peter was a sexual beast who ruined her life. But here she is, like, saying I've wrecked her life and that I was hopeless in bed and all that. Oh, but the year and a half she was with me and she was on her back, she didn't complain. And it really does annoy me because what does 10 grand all of a sudden make you want to complain? Go get your 10 grand. It's only going to last you six months and then all of a sudden you're going to be sad and lonely and no one's going to want to hear your story. Now, some of your boyfriends have got their face like the back of a dog's ass. Have you ever really looked at some of their faces? Have you ever looked at any of the ones you've been with? Fucking smut Nastasia. Well, the truth is, I never looked at their faces either. But the By the way, Anastasia, about time you get some tap, so every time you invite a man around, at least they can shower properly. Yeah, well. Anyway, so we won't go into... And she was ugh. You were ugh. You've got fucking hair like this. I've seen pictures of you. There's Look, no the way guy, you were glamour. A guy looks at And him. even Pete says that he was that desperate. He just thought, oh, you'll do. Does it hurt? Does it hurt? <laughs> Does it hurt? Listen, Good. listen, Sit and listen. Swivel. Harsh words, Katie, but she's only protecting her man. Pete once had a lucky escape with an American lady, a dalliance that failed to set the newsprint alight. So you know how you watch Jerry Springer and you have all that, mm-hmm, you ain't all that and all that? I had my own experience of that. I used to date this girl. And we were like, seeing each other, it was all fine. And one day she goes, you know, I don't think we should make love anymore. And I said, why? You know, because I'm getting spiritual and I want to get clean within myself. Oh, no, all right. No worries. I thought to myself, you weren't saying that last night, darling, but okay, no worries. She's saying this to me, right? A few days go by, I never pressured, never asked nothing, and one night she goes, fuck me. And I went, what? She goes, I said, what happened to cleaning yourself? Don't ask questions, just do it. I went, listen, right, you're too confusing for me. So we had a bit of an argument. And you know what she did? She goes, you in my house, I pay all the rent. You ain't nothing but a using mother And I said, what? She started arguing. She goes, I'm going to get baseball bat and I'm going to shove it up your ass and all this shit. Anyway, as it turned out, she kicked me out of her house at 5 o'clock in the morning, right? 5 o'clock in the morning. Because I was laughing. I couldn't, I couldn't argue. She's going, come on, mother hit me. Come on, mother I said, I know what you're trying to do. You want me to just touch you so you can send me to jail. I know I'm not going to touch you. Come on, mother Show what you made of. See if you man. See if you man. Anyway, as it turned out, she kicked me out. Five o'clock in the morning, called the police, said that there was some domestic bullshit. Police came, uh, handcuffed me. I said, you better check my police record. I said, I ain't got nothing wrong, you know? So they went and checked and I was fine, I was clear. They checked her record and she'd had criminal offences. I didn't know this and she'd already spent nights in jail um, through violence. So, 
I've had one of those Jerry Springer experiences firsthand. You know, I... Big Brother Mike knows all too well how the press love a good sex story, whatever yeah. the truth. There was an interview that was done and the tape recorder was turned off after the interview. It was a great interview, everything was fine. Photos were done, photos looked good, we saw the Polaroids. But he turned off the tape recorder, um, closed his book and asked Peter a question. How many girls you slept with, Peter? Peter said, and I'm saying it almost exactly how it was done. He said, I'm not going to tell you that. I mean, I said, you know, you're a journalist. He goes, come on, mate. He goes, I've turned my tape recorder off. He goes, you know, it's just between mate to mate, you know. I mean, you know, I just, you know, how many girls you slept with? Peter goes, I can't tell you that, you know. So he just kept on and on, conversation on to another conversation. He went back to, goes, so what do you reckon? What, have you slept what, with over 50 women? I don't know. Peter goes, well, I don't know, probably, like that. Headlines, I've slept with over 50 women. Peter and Katie may have proved themselves worthy of many column inches over the last 12 months, but how long can they keep it up? Yes, I'm up. My heart says I would love to think that in, uh, oh gosh, middle of this next century, we're settling down to a fantastic edition of perhaps the Silver Wedding OK celebration of the marriage of Peter Andre and Katie Price with children and grandchildren, goodness knows what else. Fantastic. That's my heart. My head says that people who've come out of this world of glamour and rock and pop and show business are normally so transient with their emotions, sometimes so insensitive and sometimes so selfish that they might not be in for the long haul. They have to make a decision. Are we going to carry on in this bid for, you know, to be the number one celebrity couple in the world? Or are we going to take a step back? Maybe it's time to take a step back. I hope that Katie and Peter will be happily married in ten years' time, living in utter splendour in some magnificent, sprawling, stately pile with ponies and a whole menagerie and her mother living in a granny flat on the premises and Peter's parents coming over to stay and just the living happily ever after. I hope they'll have a whole battalion of little children uh, growing up sweetly and nicely. Uh, and I hope that they really will live her dream of living happily ever after. That's what I hope for. But then you have to remember, I'm the person that said that Chris Evans and Billy Piper would make it. So what do I know? There's a wedding due this year for Katie and Peter and the prospect of some little Andre prizes. We can be sure that as long as the public want to read all about them, the paparazzi lenses will never stray far from their doorstep. Next time on Jordan and Peter Laid Bare, their friends and family on the wedding of the year. Well, I know the dress will be amazing, but... Oh, somebody's seen it already by the looks of that. Which of Katie's assets does Pete like best? Just... It's just... Oh, I love your ass. Plus, the fast cars, the horses, the couture, and the obsession with pink. How tasteful are Katie and Peter? How would I describe Kate and Peter's style? I think absolutely awful.